conceptual frameworks are a key part of any research design. Even when the conceptual framework has not been explicated, hasn't been explained to the reader, oftentimes how a study has been conducted and the results that it obtains is based on a conceptual framework. Now, for most people writing a dissertation, and generally as good practice in research, a conceptual framework needs to be articulated so that people understand exactly the perspective from which a study was conducted and the way it's being presented. So in this presentation, I'm going to show you exactly what a conceptual framework is and try to clarify a little bit because conceptual frameworks are one of the most difficult parts of the scholarly process for students to understand traditionally. I'm going to explain exactly what it is, how it should interact with your entire research design, and also show you an example from one of my conceptual frameworks as to how all of the parts should work together. A lot of what I'm going to talk about comes from a book by Ravitch and Riggin, 2012, called Reason and Rigor, How Conceptual Frameworks Guide Research. They have a lot of really good advice, I think, for clarifying exactly what a conceptual framework is and how it interacts together with uh, a, an entire research study. Now, they say there are three essential elements of a conceptual framework. Those three elements include personal interest, topical research, and a theoretical framework. Now right off the bat, you might see theoretical framework and conceptual framework and wonder exactly what the distinction is between those two. One obvious way to answer that is that the theoretical framework is part of the conceptual framework, but for a lot of scholars, they've said the theoretical framework and the conceptual framework are the same thing. Those two terms are interchangeable. Now, Riggin and Ravitch don't believe that that's the case. For them, the conceptual framework is the entire conceptualization, philosophically, methodologically, for the study, whereas a theoretical framework deals with a very specific part of what we put in the conceptual framework. It deals basically with the formal theories that might inform the entire study. And I'll explain a little bit more about that and show you how that works later. Now first, personal interest, they say, includes your own curiosities, biases, and ideological commitments, what you think is interesting or important, your theories of action, why you think things happen, and any epistemological assumptions, what constitutes useful or valuable knowledge, all of which are profoundly influenced by your social location, race, ethnicity, social class, gender, sexual identification, nationality, and other social identities, your institutional position, and life experiences. Now this is an important element, particularly in recent years with qualitative research, because so often when we talk about doing qualitative research, we say that the qualitative researcher is the instrument of the research. So the influences that you have on your perspectives have a lot to do with how the research actually is conducted and can in some cases actually bias or influence the results of the study. second element is topical research. Topical research refers to work, most often empirical, that has focused on the subject in which you are interested. It offers insights on the nature and severity of the problem, providing you with potential arguments for the study's significance. It also helps you identify gaps in the literature, but is not yet known about the topic. Finally, it allows you to survey the range of methodological approaches that have been brought to bear on the topic. So as the name suggests, this is research about your topic, things that have already been published. This is 
it's in some ways can be different from the literature review, but your literature review will certainly influence the topical research that goes into the conceptual framework. Then there's the theoretical framework. The theories that comprise a theoretical framework are usually found in the scholarly literature. Theoretical frameworks may either be borrowed from other research or fashioned by the researcher for the purposes of the study at hand. In both cases, theoretical frameworks represent a com combination or aggregation of formal theories in such a way as to illuminate some aspect of your conceptual framework. Now in a lot of ways, it sounds as if there's overlap between the theoretical framework and the topical research, and there are some overlaps. However, instead of being about the topic itself, theoretical frameworks are more uh, formal theories that can be applied to your topic, not necessarily things that have arisen from the topic. So there's a, a big distinction there. And again, it can be either taken from the literature, so you may have theories related to your field uh, that are kind of models for how other researchers think of uh, how your phenomenon happens. Or you can actually fashion this theoretical framework yourself, either by cobbling together formal theories or, in the case of a grounded theory study in qualitative research by actually creating the theory from the ground up. So as we look at the three essential elements again, to summarize them, personal interest is basically what drives you to do the research, how you're involved in that research, and any potential biases that you have that might influence what happens. Topical research is the existing research on the topic at hand. It's the what of the study. Whereas the theoretical framework are formal theories that might explain various parts of the research. It's the why and the how of the phenomenon and how it might work. Now, it might be tempting to look at these three essential elements and think, okay, well, I'll just use that as a template, or I'll take those three and use them as headings for a conceptual framework study. Ravitch and Riggin suggest against this in the most strongest terms, and so do I, because these three areas, these elements as they call them, are not somehow separate and distinct, and trying to pull them apart can cause a lot of different uh, troubles for you. And that's because if we take a look at these three elements, they're all very much interrelated. And in some ways, the boundaries between these elements is kind of fuzzy. So your theoretical framework can in some ways be related to your personal interest. And your personal interest may have topical research involved in it, and so on and so forth. Also, in any one study, certain parts of the conceptual framework might be more or less important at any one time. So all of the elements will be there, but your personal interest may be very small in one study, whereas the topical research might be the biggest part of the conceptual framework, or for some studies, theoretical frameworks might be the most important part. So trying to use these as a header or as a template just simply doesn't work very well. This should also remind us that each one of these conceptual frameworks is constructed over time, and they evolve as the studies evolve. 